outside to check on the chickens and you can see the thunderhead starting to form around us to the west. It looks like the thunderstorms are moving off to the southwest of us and you can hear the rumbles of thunder and you can see where it may be possibly raining off to the south of us. Continuing to pray for rain. Not gonna give up. Not gonna give up hope. I'm gonna keep on going. I came out yesterday to check on the chickens to see if by chance there were some eggs in the boxes and sure enough there were there were two hens who decided to start laying in the nesting box this one right here there is a faux egg and then this one in this in this side is a real egg so they're starting to kind of lay eggs in here prayerfully they'll start laying back in the nesting boxes again it sure is easy when you can walk in here open it up and get the egg and then walk out versus having to climb all the way up in and get the eggs. I'll still climb up in there and see if there's some eggs in there. More than likely there are. Check here in just a minute to see what we've got. I hey, welcome to Hanson Legacy Farm. Darren's going to be putting together the self wicking tubs that we've been talking about that we needed to put together in other videos. We're finally getting a chance to put those together, and Darren's going to tell you the materials that you're going to need to put those together. All right, so we have a 200 pound empty 200 pound mineral tub, and so I've rinsed that out good. Um, we use gallon water jugs or milk jugs, whatever, rinse them out real well. And then also I have a piece of three quarter conduit, electrical conduit, conduit that I measure up to the right height so, so it clears the top of the tub. Cut it on the 45 on the bottom, that way it won't get stopped up with any dirt as you uh, fill the tub. And, and I, we'll come up on the side about five, five and a half inches and I'll drill a half inch hole. That way that's where your water level will stay. So once as we're filling it, We'll know when to stop and or know that it is full when the water starts coming out of that hole. So and at that point we can feed all of our minerals or our fertilizer and water to our plant. And that water will just uh, come up to the top. If you'll see in these jugs as I drill holes in them, they pretty much just take up space, but they'll fill with water and then as they're empty the air will draw back into them and they'll kind of go that, that wicking process. So I'm doing it. All right. But if you look inside the tub, I've already laid my gallon jugs out, the ones I'll be using. So, but I haven't drilled holes in, in the tops and the bottoms, the sides of them yet. So what we'll do is I need to change out this drill bit is a quarter inch bit. Really doesn't matter that much. I wouldn't go with a super big one, but at least one that's big enough to allow the water in the area. And so what we'll do is we'll go in on the side about, about and I will advise be careful with this because uh, my hand on the other side of the jug, so I go pretty easy. Drill hose. So tell us how you're putting the holes in there, Darren, because I noticed that you put some on top and then now you're putting yeah, some so on the bottom. For it to wick water in and out, this will be sitting on the bottom and make sure it's got the lid on it. So it's gonna allow as we fill, as we fill water from the bottom, if the water's gonna come up, it won't. This is above, the top of this jug is actually gonna be above our hose, it's gonna be placed on probably about in this area. But it's gonna allow, as the water level drops, the air will go back in the top and allow the water to come back out. And as they fill it also, 
you know, the water's filled, it'll probably fill back up from the bottom and will allow air to come out as the water comes in. So it's going to allow the water to flow in and out along with the air. So Okay, so the lids need to stay on your yeah. carton? Yeah, it keeps the dirt cartons. from filling up the jug. So okay. It's just a bladder, basically. Okay. Approximately how many holes are you putting in here? I'm putting two holes on the top of each jug and two holes on the bottom. Okay. I would just advise to be very safe, be very careful when you're doing that because these jugs can collapse and if you got that drill going towards your leg, try to keep it yeah. away from you. So don't want anybody getting hurt by seeing anything that we're doing on, on our channel. So please be extra cautious. So you yeah, might need to like put it on a table or something. Well, I'm going away from me and trying yeah. to keep my hand above it too. So Okay. So how many milk cartons for the mineral tub, size mineral tub that we have are, would you need to have to put this together? Well, this particular uh, jug, some some of the jugs, some of the tubs are wider and sh shorter. Uh-huh. Some of them are not as wide and taller. Right. So I have some that we've created that took, took uh, what, there's six in this one that's taken seven. Right. So like we got a red one over there that I'll use, and it's going to... It's going to basically Take be more. the same amount of mineral that would go in it, or the syrup, or whatever you want to call it. Just uh, that the tub is bigger. But the tub is Rounder. shorter uh, yeah. and wider. So Okay. So it's going to depend on, the, I guess, the, the volume inside the jug. Right. So I've actually taken them also before and used uh, two liter bottles and little 16 ounce water bottles and, you know, just any kind of bottle I can. It's got a lid on, I can drill holes on and kind of fill the void up. And basically, you said yeah. that you're using those as a bladder. Right? Yeah, so they're just taking up space in there. Right. So that the water can wick in and out of these jugs. And because if, if you use nothing but dirt in the bottom, all the way to the bottom, and I'm, I'm getting all my resources from Mr. Leon. You can see his channel. He's out of, I think he's in Oklahoma somewhere, but I've seen him doing this first. So right. I give him credit for that. So, but if you use all dirt all the way to the bottom, and by the way, you got to use potting mix, you can't use dirt out of the ground or, or they will actually just compact raise and you won't bed. Get the so if you, you, use, you got to use a good potting mix and that's going to allow it to wick because it's not going to get compact and has a perlite in it mm -hmm. uh, and along with some other uh, mix that's going to allow it's not going to clump together so it's going to allow that water to wick up and down but if you go all the way to the bottom with dirt then it's going to pretty much it's not going to get the wicking action no it's just going to be solid and all it's going to run right out of there and it's not going to work at all. Right. You might as well, if you're going to do that, you might as well just uh, drill a hose in the very bottom of your tub and put some gravel in the bottom and it's filled up with your potting mix. So, right. tree limbs and stuff. We've done that before too, but it works. But Okay. But this work seemed to work good. I mean, it's it helps. Uh, if you keep it watered in the bottom, your plants are going to get fed water more evenly. And because we tend to uh, get busy sometimes and not water. I mean, the other way, you either got to have a drip irrigation on it to where it's constantly feeding or you got to be pretty disciplined to go out there and water them every day so or as needed right? yeah or as needed yeah right. depending on the rain so so, so approximately how far up on the so I tub? go Hook, hooking my tape over the bottom, I want to come up about five and a half inches. And do you need just one hole in the wicking just, tub? Just one hole on the side. One hole on the side. And one thing that you want to do, because if you're putting water in over here and your fill holes on this side, it can be kind of hard to tell when to stop watering. So. 
just make sure just make sure that you put your fill tube right here by your your hole right here that indicates the fill the fill level so because if it's way over there it's gonna be kind of hard especially if you, once you get plants in it you know i could look across it pretty easily with nothing in it but so that's one thing you want to make sure that uh you get it in the right place so and as we fill it up we'll make sure that this is in the right spot so and i i buy a funnel usually buy a funnel from walmart or somewhere where i can like stick the funnel down in here that way when we start filling it i'll put liquid uh fertilizer sometimes like a miracle grow and i'll mix it up in a watering can and we'll feed it also in there with that but as we start filling it in a minute we'll uh, fill the dirt up to the top of the jugs or the potting mix up to the top of the jugs and then i'll stop and i'll actually uh well we'll go through that step let me let me go get the potting mix and we'll do that next okay so i thought i'd walk back behind and show the same shot that i had earlier at the beginning of the video what to the south of us looks like Boy, if this comes this way, we are going to get some good rain. <laughs> Scarlett, are you going to help your papa put the dirt in? We're using, we're using a potting mix. I actually picked this up at Walmart. So, and it, it actually has a little bit of a uh, feed in it. To, it says it feeds up to six months, but, I'll, but I'm going to... I will amend it. I'll put a lot of fertilizer in it. Okay, so is this all the dirt you're going to put in the bottom well, of it? Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure I get the dirt, the potting mix packed in around the jugs good. So we want some around the sides, but again, these bladders are going to fill up a lot of the the space. So we're going to, you know, want to make sure this is where it needs to be. We're going to make sure the potting mix is packed in around the jugs and then once i get it up to that point i'll stop and i'll fertilize so what we want our plants to do is once they get started we'll we'll fertilize them when we plant them in here to initial to get a start but i want to put some fertilizer down at, at the level top of these jugs so then once the roots go down they'll find it then they'll they'll really excel from there Make them all happy and grow. That's the plan. So, I'll put a little bit more in. I want it to get it right up to the top of these lids. Watch your face, baby. Okay. Gonna move some of it around? Help, help me. Help, Papa. Let's break it up. You can see this potting mix has a lot of forced product, is what they call on the bag. And you got perlite and peat moss and some fertilizer. All we might be getting wet here in just a second. Yep. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we gotta, again, make sure your fill tube is right here. Both so tube. the hole that you yeah. Yeah. drill. Definitely want to make sure that. It's right there. And try not to leave it out. It's kind of hard to go back down in there and put it in there. And once you get your dirt in there, you'd have to pretty much empty it. So. Yeah. And once you get your fertilizer set where you want it on the level, then you know, then you have to do that all over again. So. All right. So. <laughs> gonna do now try to use blood meal and bone meal and everything I do this is more gonna be more of a slow release so this this will not really benefit you at all starting out when you're starting a plant this will be later on uh, probably a month two months down the road once you get your plant in so I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons of that in the bottom so that's the measure Spoon yeah, that came with it, right? 
This actually came out of the Miracle Grow. Oh, out wow, of the Miracle Grow? <laughs> okay. And then what are you putting in it now? Epsom salt, which is pretty much just magnesium. Right. Put a, one good heaping thing is maybe a little bit more. Some people put quarter cup. Some people put, you know, it really depends on you. I don't, I don't think you can. I put about two two tablespoons in there. And next, so I want something that's got a, it's got a, this is actually for tomatoes and vegetables. I got one that's a 12 pin size. So what I do want for later on is one, if I plant a tomato in this or something that blooms and sets fruit, I will come back and add something with a little bit more potash. So nitrogen is going to give you leaves, it's going to give you your foliage. This is going to, it's going to help you with your roots. And this is going to actually help you set fruit. This number right here. So we got nitrogen, we got phosphorus, and then potash. Okay. Three numbers. So on this one, and this is what they call a synthetic fertilizer. Synthetic fertilizer is going to give you pretty much an instant food. You know, they're they're going to kick off straight off the beginning. A lot of people want to go with nothing but. Uh, what they consider organic, slow release, like the bone meal and the potash again, it's going to be a slow, slow release. It's not going to give you much kick starting out. But this will give you a, a kick starting out. And later on, the bone meal and the potash, or the bone meal and the, the blood meal will kick in. Sprinkle in here by eyesight. And the other one I'm going to add is another one that's actually going to give me that second, that last number I want. And this is old bag. Been around for a little bit. This is your regular old standard 13, 13, 13. So it's a balanced fertilizer. It's got equal parts of uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash. So this is your old standard. Everybody's used for years. I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. Just for actually bought this at Walmart, I think, earlier or last week, and it's been sitting out in their garden center for a while, so it's kind of got a little pack. You buy the stuff in the spring where they're actually moving it, and I feel sprinkles. You feel the sprinkles? So if you get this stuff when they're actually moving it, lock well, providing it hasn't been sitting in a warehouse somewhere. So if it's been in a warehouse, hopefully it's been out of the sun, so it's not packed. This is not too bad. It's still got a little bit of moisture in it. So you need to take one of these bags to fill one of these tubs. And this is two cubic feet in measure. And that usually will do one tub. It's not gonna bring it all the way up to the very top. It's gonna and it will settle. And we I usually keep a bag that I'll uh, use to top it off with. But again, if you if you use regular dirt out of the ground or even a garden mix or any of that other stuff that's actually made for like uh, filling your raised bed garden. You know, look over there because I was looking at ours. But if you use any of that, it's going to pack in. It gets so compact it will not allow the water to switch the, switch the water back up. Water will permeate to the bottom. So we're, we're, we're trying to water through the. I think we're about to get wet. Yeah. 
All right. So that pretty much is it. Now, but that's all there is to it. <laughs> Chicken, they're great, huh? Uh, so that's pretty much it. So pretty simple. Just need some gallon jugs, uh, syrup bucket, or you can actually buy some. Of, there's something like this they sell at a uh, Lowe's that has rope handles on it. It's pretty about about the same size. I can I cannot tell you the exact size. You can find other uh, you can find other buckets other than the, the syrup tubs or mineral tubs as they call them. We're about to get some rain. We better. Yeah. Well, I, I can feel the rain. <laughs> raindrops right now. Yeah, our back so, is getting wet. Yeah, our back is getting wet. So, so look, Scarlett, can you say thank you for joining us with Hanson Legacy Farm? Your time is precious to us, and we thank you for joining us. God bless, yeah, everybody. God bless. We're about to get wet. Thanks a lot. Bye, guys. <laughs>